сам смысл, знаете, от внешнего к внутреннему. Бывает и такой момент должен быть. Не верьте тому, чем обкладывает вас дьявол. Да. Дьявол, он, а, знаете, вот поймите все, братья, вот поймите, дьявол хитрый. The very берет, meaning you know from the outer to the inner. Плохое. There is a moment when you don't believe what the devil puts on you. Understand everything, brothers, understand the devil is cunning. He takes it here doing something bad and doing something bad here, bad here, bad here. And you already have the opinion that God is against you, that you are not pleasing to God, because along with these events, a number of events are nearby. И дьявол начинает искать причины. Он запутывает тебя. И когда the он devil тебя sends the thought. What is it because of your sins that God does not accept you, that God did not please, begins to look for reasons. He confuses you, and when he confuses you, you have no reason to stand. Множество людей освобождается от душевных пут, проблем. Оков. Аминь. Вообще, это просто невероятно. Я сам слушаю ее проповеди. Когда э, у меня были моменты сложные, я каждый раз ставлю ее проповедь. That is why it is это very important to hear the word of God. That is why it is very important to always be at such prayers, which will take place today. Дьявол меня хотел обмануть. И вот я вам хочу сказать, был такой человек. Знаете, его звали... Два брата было. Одного звали Иаков а другого звали Исав. И они, знаете, они When Victoria друг prays друга, to many people, she is freed from spiritual problems. Знаете, ну, я вам For me, it's just incredible. I myself listen to her sermons. When I had difficult moments, every time I put on her sermon, I listen and wait, and then only once in a revelation, specifically at one moment I received such power and the devil wanted to deceive me. Человеком полей. А Яков человеком кротким, живущим в шатрах. Яков сидел дома. А тот был человеком полей. Он не боялся ни стужи, ни жары. Он шел, он был искусным. Да, and now был, I want to tell знаете, you, there were two brothers. One was called Jacob, from the other was called Esau. And they differed from each other, like heaven and earth. Surprisingly, you know, but I will read you chapter 25 of Genesis, verse 27. It is said, the children grew up and Esau became a skilled man in hunting. And that is a professional, a man of the fields. А Ревека любила Якова. Знаете, вот эта отцовская любовь, она играет такую ключевую роль. Мамы они как бы всегда любят, да? And вот Jacob was a meat man, living in tents. Jacob was sitting at home. And he was a man of the fields. He was not afraid of either cold or heat. He walked. He was skillful. He was, you know, a real, talented, capable such a peasant. Исав был такой, вау, он умел и приготовить для своего папы, а Яков не умел. Он сидел рядом с мамой. Понимаешь? Он, получается, как будто по сравнению с Исавом, как будто неудачником был даже вот. And Jacob, he was, as if you know, he was crushed, as if he was simply afraid to go out into the street, because he did not want anyone to see him. And now look further, Isaac's father, he saw love them. Смотрите, какая ситуация была. Он любил, написано любил, то есть он реально любил Исава. Понимаешь, Исаак любил Исава. И причина называется в Библии, почему? Look what happens because of what Isaac loved Esau. Because his game was to his taste. And Rebecca loved Jacob. You know, this is fatherly love. She plays such a key role. They seem to always love their mothers. But here's the father's love. She plays a role. She plays a role. Делают что-то, и просто вы не замечаете рядом людей, которые по-настоящему их надо любить. А вы часто любите, но любите, и все это неправда. 
You will grow with feeling, dignity, yes, dignity. And Jacob, he grew up. He knew that his father did not love him, that his father loved Esau. Jacob grew up with this feeling, friends, and I myself was like that. Esau knew how to cook for his dad, but Jacob couldn't. He was sitting next to his mother, you understand? It turns out, as if in comparison with Esau, as if he was a loser and he was a loser. And there are fathers, they even see who is a loser. И вот посмотрите ситуация Иакова, он отверженный. Но Бог, он имеет планы на этого отверженного. Он имеет планы на этого нелюбимого. Well, they love him. For example, look at Isaac, what the situation was. It is written he loved. That is, he really loved Esau, you know, and Isaac loved Esau. And the Bible gives the reason. Because the Bible is the word of God, it reveals the secret. Because his game was to his taste. You know, there are people you can love, because these people just found your weak spot and whisper in your ear what you like. You just don't notice the number of people who really need to be loved. It's all built on food. It's all built on temporary, worthless things. Isaac is a patriarch, but look what opens up. You know, there are people who follow someone just because that person says, you are great, you are great, you are great, and a real person comes and says, listen, you are wrong, here you have to change, you have to do everything better. Такие, которые очень способны, талантливые, уважаемые, они пренебрегают всегда Божьим благословением. Они пренебрегают подобными вещами. Библия говорит, что Иаков вот что главное для Бога, что ты ценишь внутри, а не какой ты. Понимаешь? Кем ты являешься, определяет то, что ты ценишь. Исаф, он был талантливый, он был способный. And look at the situation. Jacob is rejected, but God has plans for this outcast. He has plans for this unloved one. He has plans for this, which dad doesn't want to see at all. And the one who is capable of talent, a professional, God has no plans for him. In general, you look at yourself in the mirror, look at your life, look at your experience, you look at your failures, constantly focus on them every day, and you don't even suspect that God has chosen you. He has chosen you. You look and compare yourself with someone, compare yourself with some people, with some personalities, my God, and know that you are comparing yourself to them. God is telling you not to compare yourself to them. Everything you see is all fiction. You are chosen, I tell you, you are chosen, brother, you are chosen, I tell you, sister, you are chosen, hallelujah, you are chosen. My God, hallelujah, 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 look how much more interesting it turns out. Мне надо свою дочку поднимать, своего сына поднимать. Знаешь, вот так рассуждал Исав. И вот посмотрите, you will now be surprised at what happened next? You know, people who are very capable, talented, respected, they always neglect God's blessing. 
They neglect such things. And the Bible says, And Jacob cooked food, verse 29, Esau came out of the field tired, and Esau said to Jacob, Give me red to eat, this red, for I am tired. See, but Jacob said, Sell me now your birthright. Jacob, look what he appreciated. That's what matters to God, what you value inside, and not what you are. Understand? Who you are determines what you value. Esau, he was talented, he was capable, but he did not appreciate the birthright, and the birthright belonged to the firstborn son of the main part of the inheritance. He owned all the blessing that the father spoke, and the rest is almost nothing. And look at Jacob, who seemed to be an outcast, a nobody, and so forth. И пришел день, когда Бог это сделал. И эта молитва работает. И сейчас работает. He appreciated the things that come from God. Я хочу обратиться к He valued things that didn't come from people. He did not just try to be special among people, like Esau. But he wanted the divine. And so he says, sell me now your birthright. Esau said, now I'm dying. What is this birthright to me? You know, my family is hungry. What do I need from this church? Today I apologize. I have debts. I have to pay for housing. That I need your partners. That I need your mission. That I need your salvation of people. Today I have to send my daughter to college. That today I have those sick people who are dying. I need to raise my daughter, raise my son. You know, he saw reason like this. And look, Jacob did not reason like that. Esau said, Behold, I am dying. What is in this birthright to me? Jacob said, Swear to me now. He swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave bread and lentils, and he ate and drank and got up and went, and Esau despised the birthright. Birthright, brothers, can you imagine now how we discover that whatever childhood was, it can play not against me, but for me? You know, when I had a difficult childhood, I want to tell you, I read Jabez's prayer. There are two verses in total. And Jabez also prayed to God and said, If you would bless me with your blessing, spread my limits, and your hand was with me and guarded from evil so that I would not grieve. You know, I prayed this prayer for two years every day. And the day came when God did it. This prayer works. And now it works. You know, I want to address you today. Your pain from childhood, which is possible, that adolescence, youth is where the soul is simply poisoned. Listen, this is not the end. Everything will change. The main thing is that you appreciate. Most importantly, what are you looking at right now? Jacob, brethren, look, Jacob, he valued the birthright. He valued this blessing of God. Yes, he appreciated it. He didn't appreciate anything else. And look what happened next. Chapter 27, you will be surprised now that in this life you cannot deceive God. When Isaac grew old and the sight of his eyes became dull, he called his eldest son Esau and said to him, My son, he said to him, Here I am. Может статься, ощупает меня отец мой, и я буду в глазах его обманщиком, я наведу на себя проклятие, а не благословение. Мать его сказала ему, на мне пусть будет проклятие твое. Isaac said, now I am old, I don't know the day of my death. Now take your tool, your quiver, your bow, go into the field and catch me game and cook for me the food that I love. And bring me food so that my soul may bless you before I die. Imagine, he says to him these words, My soul has blessed you before I die. But the blessing belongs to the firstborn, and he sold the birthright. Rebekah heard verse 5 when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. And Esau went into the field. Rebekah said to her son Ikov, Behold, I heard the father say to your brother Esau, Bring me gain. 
And she says, Now my son, listen to my word. Go to the herd and take two good kids from there, and I will prepare food from them for your father, which he loves. Rebecca knew what kind of food he loves more, and you will bring it to your father, and he will eat to bless you before his death. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, My brother is a shaggy man, but I am a smooth man. Теперь посмотрите, ваше внимание. Когда ты внутри, Бог видит то, что внутри. Бог смотрит, как вчера мы читали, на сердце человека. Perhaps my father will feel me, and I will be a deceiver in his eyes. I will put a curse on myself, but his mother told him to let your curse be on me. My son, just listen to my word and go bring me what I need. Listen to how much mother loved Jacob and what she was ready to do. But as far as the providence of God, look and see what happens. In verse 18, he went into his father and said, Behold, I am my father. Who said, Who are you? I am Esau, your firstborn I did as you told me. Get up and eat before your soul blessed me. And Isaac said to his son that you had found me so soon, my son. He said, because the Lord your God sent to meet me. And Isaac said, come to me, I'm feeling you. Are you Esau my son or not? Jacob went up to Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, Jacob's voice, but hands, hands from Esau. And he did not recognize him, because his hands were like the hands of Esau. Да даст тебе Бог от росы небесной и от тука земли, и множество хлеба и вина. Да послужат тебе народы, и да поклонятся тебе племена. Будь господином над братьями твоими, и да поклонятся тебе сыны матери твоей. Now look at your attention. When you are inside, God sees what is inside. God looks at the heart of a person. A person looks at the face. And God looks at the heart. God looked into the heart of Jacob, who dreamed of God's Blagoslovia. Look, Esau sold the blessing to Jacob, so God allowed Isaac to go blind at the end of his life. Have we ever wondered why, at the end of a God-blessed life, a person suddenly stopped seeing it all? Because he didn't see what he needed to see, and he was blind. Then look, we read about how Isaac, look what he says. When he had eaten Isaac, his father said to him, Come to me, kiss me, my son, he came and kissed him. And Isaac smelled the smell of his clothes and blessed him and said, Behold, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. Yes, God will give you from the dew of heaven and from the fat of the earth and much bread and wine. May nations serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers. And yes, your mother's sons will bow down to you. Those who curse you are cursed, those who bless you are blessed. Look, he blessed him, and further it is written how soon Isaac completed his blessing over Jacob, and as soon as Jacob left the presence of his father Isaac, Esau his brother came from his hunt, he prepared food and brought it to his father, and said to his father, Arise, my father, and eat the game of your son, so that your soul will bless me. His father told him, Who are you? He said, I am your firstborn son Esau, and Isaac trembled with a very great trembling and said who it was who got the game and brought it to me, and I ate from everything before you came, I blessed him. He will be blessed, Esau, having heard the words of his father, raised a loud and very bitter cry. And he said to his father, My father, bless me also. But he said, Your brother came with a trick and took your blessing. And Esau said, No, why was his name Jacob? For shutting me up two times already. He took the birthright, and now he has taken my blessing. He also said, 
Didn't you leave me a blessing? Isaac answered, so I made him master over you. And then you don't have to read. And you know, many theologians generally say that Jacob is a deceiver. He took Jacob and deceived. I deceived and as if I stole blessings. But I want to tell you now, listen to me, everyone who has a real expectation in life today that it will not be as you want. It will be as God wants. Amen. And Jacob never stole a blessing. Jacob bought that blessing. He bought the birthright Esau, sold him the birthright. And when Esau came to his father, and he said, I want to bless you, that honest Esau would say, Dad, I sold the birthright to Jacob, so bless him. No, he wanted to steal the blessing that I sold to Jacob. Esau was the thief here, not Jacob, and Jacob came for his own, then what did he pay for? Whenever you pay the price, remember always when you seek God, always when you renounce something in this life, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of saving people, when you can sacrifice something that is dear to you, for the sake of Christ being glorified, for the sake of someone being healed, I want to tell you, you can deceive a person, but you will never deceive God. God, he sees everything, and he will do everything in truth. God sees what other people do not see. God sees our motives. He sees our intentions. He sees why we do it, and he sees why we serve. He sees why. Why is it so difficult? Why is it so difficult? And we move on. What drives us? Because we have no other life, we have no other God, we have nothing at all. We have only God and eternal life, and that's it. Here is our wealth. And when God sees this, when God sees that we are ready to lose everything for Him, that we are ready, we want, we long for Him, we believe in Him, we believe in eternal life. Uh, knowing that God sees it. And that's why here, friends, when you hear that Jacob stole the blessing, he didn't steal it. He came and took what was his. And Esau received what was his. That is, nothing, slavery, with his abilities, with his talents, with his great gifts. Look, people today just stay on the street. You know, I always like to go to the Crimea, and every time I came in there I saw a guy standing on the embankment and playing the guitar. He plays there, copying this Rosenbaum. And he plays beautifully, very beautifully. And one day we began to listen. A lot of people are talking among themselves, and he stopped, and he would scream at everyone, Did you come here to talk or listen to me? People turned around and left. He was left alone. I know what I'm saying. He's been singing there for years. Because with all the talents and gifts with his damn character, he did not get along in any team in his entire life. And even on the street, people do not want to throw money into the bag, because it is disgusting to everyone. You see, because it's not really talents and gifts that will lift you up. In fact, sincere love for God and sincere love for brothers and sisters. Sincere love, compassion for sick people who are suffering today, and you can serve them in any way. Oh, God appreciates all this. He sees your heart. Jacob became blessed, and God did not leave him there. You know what happened? Reading you another scripture, and we'll close. But you know, we will pray that the same thing that happened to Jacob will happen to you. Oh my God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And here is written the 32nd chapter of Genesis, 24th verse. Jacob was left alone and someone fought with him until dawn, and seeing that he did not overcome him. Imagine not overpowering him, overpowering Jacob, touched his thigh joint and damaged Jacob's thigh joint when he was wrestling with him. And he told him to let me go. 
That is, as if God was telling him to let me go, for the dawn had risen. That is, God, he always wants, he always wants, as it were, to maintain anonymity. Friends, God always wants to act in secret, and he says, the dawn has come, you don't need to see it now. But look what Jacob says, Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. And you think, how can God bless you? How? Attention. And he said, what's your name? He said, Jacob. People translate the name Jacob as a cunning deceiver, a scoundrel, there and in different ways. But I'll tell you, would James really be called an apostle? Would Ikov be called great people? If this word meant a cunning deceiver, a scoundrel would not. It's just that Jacob was a man who had that name that reminded him of his whole childhood, his whole life. That's the problem? And God says to him, what is your name? He said Jacob and said, God, from now on your name will not be Jacob, but Israel, for you fought with God and you will overcome men.